Gilbert Ford's The Marvelous Thing That Came From a Spring, The Accidental Invention of the Toy That Swept the Nation. Photography by Greg Andres. Richard James was a dreamer, but in 1943, the United States was at war. Richard had to support his country and his family, so he worked as an engineer for the United States Navy in a shipyard in Philadelphia. His assignment was to invent a device that would keep fragile ship equipment from vibrating in choppy seas. Richard tried all kinds of springs, but nothing was working. Then one day, a torsion spring fell from the shelf above his desk. Its coils took a walk, and so did Richard's imagination. The spring might not work for the Navy's ships, but Richard knew he had stumbled onto something. What was it? After work, Richard rushed home and showed his wife, Betty, the floppy spring. They gave the spring to their son, Tom, who let it go from the top of the stairs. The family watched in astonishment as it walked all the way down. I think it's a toy, Richard marveled. Betty thought so, too. She also thought that if they wanted to share their discovery with the world, they needed to figure out what on earth to call the thing. Betty thumbed through a dictionary for two days, underlining words. Nothing sounded quite right, until she found slinky, meaning graceful and curvy in movement. Slinky also sounded like the swish and clink of the spring's coils in motion. It was only a name, but it was just right. With one word, Betty thought she could transform this spring into Slinky, a one-of-a-kind thing. Richard and Betty wanted to produce a lot of Slinkies, but they did not have the money to do it. So Richard sprang for the bank and took out a $500 loan to have 400 Slinkies made. Once they arrived, Richard brought his invention to every store in Philadelphia, but no one wanted it. Was the James's idea a flop? Finally, he tried a large department store called Gimbel's. Gimbel's showed as little interest in the toy as the other stores, but Richard begged the manager to allow him to demonstrate how it worked to the holiday shoppers just once. And so on a stormy night in November 1945, with Christmas just weeks away, shoppers poured into Gimbel's. They were searching for the next great stocking stuffer, and Richard was ready. He placed the coil at the top of the ramp he had built and scanned the store for Betty. Where was she? Betty was still pacing back and forth at home. She was afraid no one would want the toy. Just in case, she asked her friend to pose as an excited shopper and gave her a dollar to buy one. But Richard was unable to wait any longer, so he took a deep breath and let the slinky go. When Betty finally arrived at Gimbel's, there was no need to pretend to love the toy. All 400 slinkies had been sold in 90 minutes. The slinky was a hit. The war ended that same year and the troops returned home to marry their sweethearts. A baby boom, soon followed and demand for the slinky skyrocketed. So Richard dreamed up an even bigger idea. He used his engineering skills to build a machine that could coil 80 feet of steel wire into a slinky in 10 seconds. While Richard made the slinkies and drove the delivery van, Betty kept the business running smoothly. She frantically filled orders, sent and collected payments, and hid their profits in a roasting pan below the basement. Soon there was more business than the Jameses could handle by themselves. So Richard and Betty built a factory and hired 20 people to work for them. At last, they were able to spin out enough slinkies for every child in America to have one. Today, the slinky still inspires kids of all ages and all across the globe to play. It took the teamwork of a dreamer and a planner to turn an ordinary spring into a truly marvelous thing. Note, 
The Slinky walked its way across the cultural landscape in 1945 and has kept walking ever since. Even though it was originally intended as a toy, it has sparked people to invent different uses for it. The Slinky was used as an antenna for radios during the Vietnam War, as a device for understanding wave mechanics, and as a therapy tool for patients who had suffered from strokes or other disorders. It was launched into space on the shuttle Discovery to help astronauts demonstrate how gravity worked. And the co clinking coils of the Slinky even inspired a musician, John Cage, to create experimental music based on the sound. In 1960, Richard James, still the dreamer, left to do missionary work in Bolivia. With James Industries nearly bankrupt, Betty took over and relocated the factory to Hol Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania. Within four years under her leadership, the company sprang back to life. Betty expanded the line and advertised the Slinky on TV. The famous jingle is still remembered today. What walks down the stairs, a loner in pairs, and makes a slinkity sound? A spring, a spring, a marvelous thing, everyone knows it's Slinky. Today, Slinky is still made in the United States. More than 250 million of the toys have been produced since its invention by machines based on Richard James's original design. In 2001, Betty James was inducted into the Toy Industry Hall of Fame.